Another photographer I saw at a PP of A convention, Philip Stewart Charis. He was given a program on his simple lighting technique. He used an umbrella lighting. And his camera of choice, though, was a view camera, an 8x10 camera, but he had on it a 5x7 reducing back. So in other words, his output was to a 5x7 piece of film. And after... Well, as he was given his program, he had about maybe 12, 18 images on stage there, and they were all covered. And after his program, people, they went around and they unveiled each one, one at a time. And it was the most, they were the most beautiful portraits I've ever seen. In fact, just looking at them, it just almost brought, actually it did, it brought tears to my eyes. They were just so spectacular. The uh, resolution, and they were life almost, well, they were actually very close to, to a life-size portrait. And they were family groups and maybe uh, couples in three-quarter length poses. Just beautiful. Just had so much impact. So you're going to get better image quality, all things being equal, from a larger sensor or a larger film camera. Now, I also remember the story about Alfred Eisenstead, one of my favorite photojournalist photographers. He was one of the, I believe, one of the first life photographers from Life magazine. He did so many different photographs, so many stories, he had so many life covers. He was just spectacular. And when he first got started, he was using a 35 millimeter an old Leica, a beat-up Leica camera. And I remember him telling a story uh, to his girlfriend once, later became his wife. He showed her his camera, and she said, so where's your real camera? Because it was considered a toy at the time. 35 millimeter was really a toy, just getting started. But he did some beautiful images with the equipment that he was using, and there were many other photojournalist also that did the same thing, that did outstanding magazine work. Because you're able to travel uh, lighter, you have less baggage, less things to worry about. I think he rarely, if ever, used flash. He knew, he knew how to see and how to utilize the lighting that he had. It, it all boils down to doing the best with what you have and working with the, your surroundings and the lighting that you have uh, is going to determine the image quality of what you get. I also remember hearing a story about a, the person that won the National Geographic Travel Competition. It was a beautiful image. I remember seeing it. There was a bunch of people walking. Man, the lighting was just so beautiful. The color saturation on there was just gorgeous. And guess what? It was taken with a Canon point-and-shoot 6-megapixel camera. So you don't really need a full-frame sensory camera to take outstanding images. You can definitely, definitely do it with a crop sensory camera as compared to a full frame. But like I said though, you can go larger. You can go even, even your sensor sizes now come in a medium format. Little on the pricey side, but why stop at full frame? If you're gonna be doing some serious, uh, whether it's life-size wall portraits, you're doing some really high-end fashion or magazine work, why not consider using a medium format such as Leica or Hasselblad or uh, there's Pentax also. Some of the companies that I'm familiar with that make uh, medium format digital cameras. So looking at the chart here, you can see how small that half inch sensor really is. And that's what you're getting from a point and shoot. And then if you're looking at the APS Nikon DX sensor, it's quite a bit larger than the uh, point and shoot, which is relatively small. And then moving on up, if you look at the 35 millimeter full frame, quite a bit larger yet. So that explains it. And of course, why stop there? If you're going to be doing really high-end work, why not go into a medium format? 
And if you take a look at the immediate format, there's actually, this is one of the sizes, but they also come just a little bit smaller. But this medium format is just so much larger than even a full frame. So imagine if you're doing giant wall size images because there are people who are selling beautiful wall decor, whether they're at craft shows or in their own studio. One of my friends years ago, as he was traveling, he came across a photographer that was selling beautiful wall decor. I think I think this the one that he purchased from the photographer was probably about six or eight feet long. And it was beautiful. So imagine having that in your home. So I always, so if you're going to be doing that kind of work, I think it's definitely worth getting the most, getting the best quality that you can get with the amount of money that you can spend. So that's another factor. So who's the full frame camera sensor for? Well, it's for photographers that want to get a little bit better image quality if they're shooting under very low light situations, high ISOs, they want to get a little bit more of a higher dynamic range, better resolution, it's going to be a benefit there. But that's not saying that you cannot get beautiful images from a crop centered camera like Nikon's DX or Canon's, I guess they call theirs the APS, uh, even a point and shoot. Concentrate first on the aspects or the art of photography. Learn all about lighting. Notice how at different times of the day, how the light varies. You could take a photograph of a location at a certain time of the day, it's bland. You might want to go back either early morning or when you get that sweet light right before the sun sets. That's going to make a difference, a huge difference in that photograph. So learn about lighting, learn about composition, how you can rearrange certain things or you can rearrange yourself when you're taking the image. So once you understand that, sure, it's nice to have all this fancy gear. And if money is no object, go ahead. But then again, you're weighed down. You're weighed down by things that may slow you down and you might miss some of those photographs. So remember, whether it's a point and shoot, crop sensor, full frame, even medium format, get the lighting right, get the composition right first, and then you're going to have a beautiful, fantastic image no matter what camera you're using.